I'm sorry about the uh, slight delay. Um, my name is Ophir Arkin, and uh, during this talk, I'll be releasing uh, XProbe 2 version 0.3. Um, prior to that, I'll be talking about several aspects of uh, doing active OS fingerprinting. Uh, basically, we're going to discuss the uh, problems that uh, are usually associated with active OS fingerprinting, and we'll see how we can remedy that. Um, a bit about myself. The founder of the C-Security Group, also founder of uh, Insidex, I'm the chief technical officer there. Um, I've done some research about infrastructure discovery, voice of IP security, and OS detection. Um, and I'm also a member of the uh, Voice of IP Security Alliance. So what is OS detection? OS detection is basically the uh, process of trying to uh, determine what is the underlying operating system of a certain remote uh, element. Traditional approach will uh, send some packets, will examine the uh, stack behavior, usually with IP, UDP, TCP, and ICMP in order to draw some conclusions about that underlying OS. Usually when results are received from uh, a target element, those results will be compared to a certain signature database a certain tool will have in an effort to uh, find uh, a match. Uh, just because the traditional approach is to use TCP IP stack based fingerprinting, usually limited to those protocols I've mentioned, it doesn't say, doesn't mean that we cannot use the application layer also to provide us with information about the OS. Um, there are several tools out there that uh, does active OS fingerprinting. Um, Nmap, for example, is a good tool doing that, uh, Expo2 and others. Basically, um, these tools varies with the way of operation, usually because of the uh, different tests they're using, basically the uh, packets they're sending to the target host, trying to enumerate the operating system, the number of packets they're sending, and the way of operation. Um, why is that important to, uh, for us to identify the underlying operating system? Well, I guess that uh, for each and one of us is something different. Um, some needs that to uh, do uh, vulnerability assessment. Some like to have some context about their network. And there are some companies who use OS detection as a means to uh, uh, have some context for their network intrusion detection systems and network intrusion prevention systems. If we uh, go and look at the uh, strength of uh, doing your remote active OS fingerprinting, then one of the uh, things that the most important is that we can control everything. We can control what parameters that we would like to scan. We can control the uh, speed that we perform the scan, the uh, initiation of the scan, the time of the initiation. Um, usually, uh, such a tool will provide with fast results if there are no obstacles on the way. And then, of course, it can also cover uh, entire IP ranges. Um, several companies use these kind of tools. Uh, they might uh, scan from one single point to uh, multi-point. This is where the uh, tool is uh, installed on one element on the network and scans multiple. And there are some other implementations where uh, a scanning tool will be installed on different parts of the network and will um, scan from there other parts of the network. That's basically it. These are all the strengths. There are a lot of weaknesses. The weaknesses go into different categories. Um, the biggest problem is the uh, scanning conditions and the environment effects on the uh, scan. Uh, the way that the OS detection tool operates, uh, the uh, signature database is an automatic caveat, and also some other tool related issues. So let's start by uh, looking at the uh, scanning conditions and the environment attack and the environment effects. Um, basically, when we perform uh, an OS detection or basically any other, any other scan, we do not control the quality of the scan. We cannot control over anything, basically. Whatever is between us to the target may determine what we're going to get back. So probably most of you know this. Uh, if you scan an element on a local network, this is some, some one thing. If you scan an element that is 
on the internet, that is something else. Um, and basically, those locations of the target systems will determine what you're getting. It's most uh, likely that when you scan an element that is on your local network, you'll get better results. When you scan an element that is on the internet, you'll get, well, sometimes nothing. And also, the uh, path between the scanning element to the target also determines what uh, we will be getting. The problem currently is that we do not have any kind of, on, any kind of intelligence about what do we have between us to the target. There is currently no tool that is going to tell us, okay, there is a file here, a proxy between us to the target, or something else that prevents us or changed the way the, uh, uh, either our packet or the returning packet had arrived to us. Um, in order to have good results with any OS fingerprinting tool, you have to have uh, the uh, target machine willing to talk to you, meaning that your packets will arrive to the target machine, and also that the target machine will be operational on the network, meaning it will be up. Um, and of course, if you don't have elements such as network-based firewalls, host-based firewalls, not enabled devices, uh, load balancers, and other things between you to the uh, target. So just a quick example. If the uh, scanning machine scans the local network, there is a firewall between the scanning machine to one of the networks, and it prevents the uh, sending packets through to targets, that part of the network will not be identified, and those hosts will not be listed by the tool. This is also true if you have personal firewall installed on a machine, that will prevent OS detection from working. Uh, you'll never get any active OS detection works working like that. Another example is that uh, if uh, some of you, not hinting, uh, sits at home and wants to uh, scan a www.companythatyoulike.com, um, and that company that you like .com has load balancers uh, in front of uh, its web servers. Well, the initial approach of voice fingerprinting will not work here. Um, some of uh, some of those load balancers will answer uh, themselves to the probe. Some of them uh, will change some of the parameters uh, that will go back to the uh, scanner, and some of them even, uh, if there is no um, if there is no one OS that operates on the uh, web servers behind the load balancers, then we might get funny results back. Um, so basically, the uh, the results will be that if the packets that you need uh, in order to uh, draw conclusions about the OS is being dropped, then you don't get anything. Um, sometimes, when we send packets to the target, there is something along the way, uh, like a scrubber, a firewall. I don't know how many of you uh, are familiar uh, with uh, Checkpoint Firewall, but that firewall can scrub several uh, fields inside a packet that comes back. And um, those kind of alterations will prevent uh, us from determining what is the underlying OS there. Sometimes, if uh, a tool uses uh, malformed packets, those packets will also uh, be dropped by uh, an intrusion prevention system or other system that checks for um, uh, for the legitimacy of the uh, packet. So, some uh, examples would include some weird uh, TCP/IP flag combinations, like uh, SINFIN, SIN reset. Those will never go through an IPS and never. Uh, be able to reach the target. So, of course, if uh, the tool that you're using, using uh, is using crafted packets and is sending crafted packets throughout the internet, then uh, that tool will not be able to provide with good results. The other, uh, the other problem that uh, we have there is that sometimes those malformed packets may have another hidden effect that might uh, cause some TCP IP stacks to crash, especially when uh, when those stacks doesn't need to do uh, too many things, uh, especially we can name printers, um, we can name print servers, and things like that. Um, and of course, there are some other smart people out there that uh, want to obscure the way that their operating system works, so they change the. Uh, Characteristics of the uh, TCP/IP stack behavior by altering some kernel parameters, uh, tunable kernel parameters. So, if you were uh, familiar 
with several commands, uh, with the, uh, for example, the CCTL command and the uh, NDD command on Sun. Uh, and then you are able to tune the parameters also. On Linux, it's very easy to perform these kind of things. So let's go into some signature-based uh, related issue. The signature database is the most important piece of any OS detection tool. If the uh, signature database will be corrupted, um, if the uh, signatures will not be inserted to the signature database in a correct manner, then at the end of the day, you'll have a corrupted signature database and it will not help the tool, even if the tool is using the most admirable uh, test out there, still the results that the uh, tool will be uh, performing will be poor. This is a traditional um, argue between those who uh, strictly control their signature database to those who allow people to submit signatures for their tool. Um, my approach is that if I want to insert a signature, I want it to work in most of the cases, I won't insert a signature that someone sent me off a firewall device because there is no use of it. Uh, that's music. Um, so basically, my approach takes it to the extreme. Basically that I need to go and I need to see the device, I need to verify the OS, I need to verify the, uh, uh, in some cases, what it is actually running. Um, the lab environment is the best uh, way to do this. And therefore, when you uh, enter the uh, signature in question to the uh, signature database, it will work in most of the cases. Some, uh, some, of, some of the other tools that are out there simply would say, okay, uh, there is a web page here, let's submit some signatures. And then you don't know what was the actual test there and that this signature was pr produced at. And you try to run a certain test and at the end of the day what you get is a mixed result that never comes close to the reality. So we can uh, strictly control the uh, process of uh, inserting signatures into the uh, database. Sure, it has its uh, downside. Uh, it's a slower process. It has a limit on the uh, number of signatures and devices that you can insert into the uh, database because we can't buy them all or we can't access them all. And the one plus of it is that it is extremely accurate. On the other hand, if we do not control the signature database, then signatures are inserted because they are there. Uh, the creation process is not controlled. Um, if those signatures are created in the wrongfully manner, then we have a corrupted database and uncontrolled one, which is extremely inaccurate. When, the, when we do OS fingerprinting, we fingerprint the way that the uh, software reacts to the uh, probes that we send. When we fingerprint the hardware-based device, basically we fingerprint the way the firmware actually answers us. And this is a common mistake when we go and we try to do this thing. Um, because if you are familiar with hardware-based devices, then most of them will, for the same manufacturers, most of them will run the, either the same um, firmware or a slightly different firmware. Uh, usually depends either on their uh, role or the uh, manufacturer decides that he wants one firmware to all. So there are a few examples with that. Um, a Cisco uh, 7200 uh, will be fingerprinted as uh, 2950, as the switch 2950, as a 6500 running iOS, and even as the Aeronet's uh, wireless access points. Why? Because they're all running iOS and with traditional uh, TCP IP uh, based stack fingerprinting, we're not able to tell the difference of their roles. Uh, there are other nice examples. Uh, Foundry networks usually run the same OS, uh, sorry, the same uh, firmware on all of their systems and also uh, the printers, if you're familiar, familiar with HP printers, those will uh, also run the same firmware or slightly different firmware, depends on the uh, year and the updates. But unfortunately, uh, some OS fingerprinting tools don't take this into account. And at the end of the day, it also brings them to the, uh, for having um, a corrupted database. When you do a fingerprinting of uh, HP, what you get is not that this is an HP printer. You get that it might be a, um, a home printer 
uh, corporate printer or whatever else printer and other things, but at the end of the day, that's the firmware, not the uh, model. Um, when we want to expand and use other fingerprinting tests and uh, we want to expand what we have, then we need to go through the entire signature database and we need to update it. If, uh, if we need to do so, it's part of the uh, uh, signatures or part of the tool uh, evo evolution, then we need to go through entire signatures and update them with new tests. If we do not control what is inside the uh, database, then we're unable to update that. So we might have new tests that we want to have, we might have new things that we want to introduce, but at the end of the day we can't do that because we don't have control of that. And of course, there is one other small issue which is political issue. The political issue is that uh, many open source tools basically are abused because many commercial companies do not read the license and they take the uh, uh, signature database and just they claim it as their own. There is some examples for that but at the end of the day when you uh, contribute something to the open source community and you hope that uh, it is actually being used, then you don't want your work to be stolen as well. This actually causing uh, some guys that manufacture, that actually uh, develop uh, open source tools not to insert the entire knowledge of, uh, into those tools or sometimes not to insert their entire signature database into those tools because they know that people will just go download the uh, signature database, enjoy what they have done and basically don't pay them anything. There are some issues that uh, relates to the way the uh, OS, uh, OS fingerprinting tool actually works. Um, scan results needs to be matched with the uh, signature database. Uh, there are actually two ways of doing that. Actually, they can can be more. Either you do strict signature matching, where you search for a 100% match between what you've got to the signature database, or that you use a uh, statistical analysis approach, which basically says we'll find the best match for you and we will present you with the best match even if some of those tests had failed. So these are the two approaches that we have. Um, another problem is that Stacks looks alike uh, with uh, new released operating systems and there are only n number of tests or n, n number of parameters that we can look for. So theoretically, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, the number of possible matches should be reached. Although this number is still currently high, uh, there are classes of different operating systems that even when we use uh, several new um, OS fingerprinting tests or old OS fingerprinting tests, we're still unable to distinguish between their stacks because the uh, tests that we're using are insufficient to do so. So what we need to have is the ability of a tool to have um, fingerprinting test that has multiple parameters inside of them that they represent um, different OS's in uh, different, uh, the many parameters are different among the uh, TCP IP stack and that allows us to receive uh, better overall results. Another problem that we have is that some tests regard are regarded better than others. It means that if they would fail then the quality of results that we will have will be uh, lowered. Um, for example, if we will not receive CNAC response for uh, a SYN request to uh, an open port or we will not get this uh, kind of response at all, or we will not receive port enrichable for uh, UDP packet, then the, uh, basically the uh, way that we will have results basically will not have too much. Um, I've touched this uh, slightly beforehand. Uh, this is the problem of uh, having slight differences between uh, the TCP IP stacks of newly released operating systems to an older one. Um, XPSP2, for example, and uh, Windows 2003 share the same characteristics of the, of the uh, stack. So does Windows 2000 and XP uh, with no SP and SP1. And so does uh, some Linux kernels share the same characteristics. This actually brings us to the point that we cannot 
have granular results. What we have is just grouped results that at the end of the day might, show, might say, okay, this is a window system, but actually it will not list the underlying OS. Another problem that we have is that the type of information that we are able to extract using traditional TCP IP stack fingerprinting is limited. And one of the uh, examples can be shown with uh, the different Windows operating system service packs. Um, traditional TCP IP based uh, tools uh, are not able to tell the service pack in most of the cases. And this is a problem if you want to uh, uh, use the information for other tools like vulnerability assessment. When we have, um, when we're using a tool, we would like to have the uh, maximum flexibility with the tool. We would like to have the ability to control what models it is using. So if we know that we operate against a web server, we're not going to use tests that we assume that will be uh, dropped or not be answered. So an active OS fingerprinting tool needs to have all of his models controlled and has to allow the user to specify exactly which models he want to use and what types of uh, par uh, packets you want to send to the, um, uh, to the host. Another uh, problem, and this is the uh, last of the row, um, is that sometimes um, active voice finger binding tools will um, pose an out of service condition to those elements they're scanning. The problem is that sometimes those will use uh, non-RFC compliant uh, packets or the uh, pace of the scan will be too fast for the uh, uh, element to handle and that will cause uh, the element to crash or to just drop packets. Um, I have a Kyocera Amida FS 1900 printer in my office. Uh, if I scan it with NMAP, the uh, printer crashes to the point that I have to go and I have to power off the uh, printer and power it on. So the uh, summary for this is that we need to understand the Terran, we need to understand what we're scanning, we need to understand what's between us to the target. Um, if we cannot meet the conditions that we need in order to get good results, then basically we're not going to get any kind of results. Um, we need to understand those conditions in order to build better tools that will allow us to receive results even if we're operating against a well-fortified uh, elements uh, sitting uh, behind different uh, kind of security uh, mechanisms. There are some other approaches that came and say, okay, let's decide or let's see if we can bypass those problems and uh, basically what they have said is that, okay, let's take one protocol, we try to analyze that and we'll use only that protocol in order to draw conclusions about what we see. So there are some researches, um, if you heard about a tool called TBIT, T -B -I -T. basically they uh, look for the uh, current state of TCP IP implementation or TCP implementations on web servers. So they took the tool and said, okay, this is something that uh, we can use in order to do OS fingerprinting. But the problem is that using multiple uh, tests only against an open TCP port it actually doesn't do anything because uh, there's still, you are at the point with which the, the uh, Windows operating system as a group will be identified. And we can actually perform this kind of tests only with one packet when we do not need all of those packets in order to do that. So if we look at the needed solution, then we need intelligence in scanning. We need to understand the Terran that we operate against and we need the active voice fingerprinting tool to understand the quality of received uh, results in order to react to the received results with proper targeted um, OS detection tools. So at the end of the day, what we're looking for is we, we're looking for a tool that will have the ability not only to perform um, stack-based OS fingerprinting, the traditional approach, but also to have the ability to have application-based uh, fingerprinting test along with the tool. Something along the lines of, uh, you can't see this because it's all screwed. Something along the lines of, uh, we send several packets, 
we analyze what we've received back, we see which ports are open, what services, what type of family of operating system we are operating against, and then the tool will be able to launch automatically the kind of application-based um, fingerprinting test that needs to be run against those family of operating systems. Question until this point? No questions. Okay. So, uh, for the past four years, I've been one of the developers of uh, Xprop2, which is an active OS fingerprinting tool. Open source, remote active OS fingerprinting tool that you can use. Or can you, I mean, if you like it, you use it. If you don't, you don't. Um, the project represents our take, our beliefs, and basically it's our fun to create it. If you use it, great. If not, again, it's your choice. Um, it was voted one of the uh, top 75 network security tools. It replaced NMAP as the OS detection engine for Nessus after, uh, if you're familiar with Nessus, Nessus uses SMB, NTP, and then it will use the OS fingerprinting test that are found with Xbox 2. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes. If you are at the application layer, they will play with some of those uh, those parameters as well. Um, Xprop2 basically uses uh, less packets than any other OS fingerprinting tool. Well, we at least try to. Uh, it does not disturb the operation of the target system. Uh, you can control whatever models you would like to use. And of course, at the end of the day, if you use it in the lab against whatever you'll put there, you'll see that uh, it will give you more accurate results than any other, any other tool. Um, I'll skip this slide. Basically, what we did along the four years. The uh, different software models that we have there, uh, basically we have some discovery models, some uh, information gathering models, and some um, OS detection models, of course. Um, the tool has a very extensive command line options, which I will not go into, because you didn't come for this now. Um, the tool is able to detect if there are obstacles between the tool and a target system. So for example, if you have a proxy between you and the target system, it is able to detect that. Um, and other gizmos that I'll go through. So very fast, discovery models basically are designed to perform host detection. Uh, their aim is to uh, not only to see that the host is alive, but also to aid the uh, automatic um, receive timeout mechanism in understanding what is the timeout that needs to be automatically selected for the target host. This is important because when you scanning something, you don't want to time out too fast on that, on that one. There is also a port scanner with the tool. Uh, you can uh, specify ports to be scanned user either, either capital T or uh, capital U for UDP and TCP, respectively. There are some exp examples for that. Uh, so you get a list like with any other tool of the open ports, closed ports, and filtered ports. So. If you want perfect results, you need to have an open TCP port, a closed TCP port, a closed UDP port, and either receive replies for uh, echo request, timestamp request, and address mess request. Um, before this version, we uh, introduced another OS fingerprinting uh, model called Reset Act. Basically, what we do there is we send two uh, scenes to a closed port and we compare them. That tests actually allowed us to differentiate between the different groups of the Linux kernels, and we can actually divide them into, uh, what's that, seven groups. Uh, this is a very useful tool if uh, you need to uh, have the understanding if this is a 2.4 based kernel or 2.6 based kernel, and also go inside those uh, families of kernels and have some information there. Some other useful Command line options by default, if you run Xprop2 with minus V and minus B, it automatically will try to enumerate several ports. Uh, so you don't need to uh, specify a port scan, you just do a, a lower V, uppercase B, and the IP address. You are also able to automatically generate signatures uh, using the capital F command line, and you can save the information using the uh, minus O command line. Okay that you can do yourself at home, you can play with it. Um, the version that we are releasing today uh, is available for download. You can either go to my website or can directly go to our page at uh, 
uh, source forward source forge basically what we have is we have two new application based OS fingerprinting models inserted to the tool in order to help the tool operate better bless you uh, in different scanning conditions we also have new signatures and we have also have several bug fixes the first uh, app based uh, OS fingerprint model that we have uh, entered and it's not something new but it's good to have in a tool it's an SMB based model basically very good against uh, Microsoft Windows based machines that have their file and print sharing working um, it basically retrieves the uh, native OS and uh, native Lundman parameters uh, from uh, the uh, SMB session setup and NX replies um, and it helps us differentiate between different uh, Windows OS's such as uh, Windows XP in 2003 between several uh, problems that we have between 2000 and XP and basically it allows us granularity when it comes to uh, Windows operating systems so we have different you have new uh, keywords that you specify the information there called SMB underscore Lundman and SMB underscore native OS you put the information there it all works this is an example two, um, not using the SMB model at the end of the day what you see is the results are all mixed up XP with 2000 and we can't see really the uh, differentiation this model works automatically when you tell the model to use port 139 when you port scan port 139 so you specify the uh, minus T 139 with the command line uh, it's automatically executed and at the end of the day the results are Windows 2000 because this is a Windows 2000 service pack 4 based machine another model that uh, we have inserted is a SNMP based model mostly it's good when uh, it is used against um, well those elements that use SNMP but also when you have certain kind of uh, um, an element which is a hardware based and you want to extract that information in order to help you uh, detect what's the uh, underlying operating system currently only uh, SNMP v2 is being supported but the next version will have v1 and v3 as well um, and it needs to have UDP port 161 open in order to operate so uh, this is an example with uh, FreeBSD 5.3 you can see uh, if you can look at it actually that the SNMP community uh, string was public there you can uh, um, look at the export2.conf and specify there and what the information was extracted from the free PSD 5.3 based machine you can see that this actually contributed to the fact that we got free PSD 5.3 um, with 100 percent and the other free BSDs with less percentage than that we have also uh, new signatures for uh, the different Apple Mac OS 10 uh, we have missed those signatures for quite a long time we have updated the signatures for Linux, FreeBSD, and OpenBSD, and we also have fixed several bug fixes that we have with the tool. Um, and we would like to uh, take the tool to uh, a different level by automating the scans, by understanding the Terran, but I guess it will take us a bit of time to do that. Questions? Yes. if you use SMB and SNMP and you do port scan you're not stealth um, any IDS IPS or anything that will look for these kind of parameters will pick you up easily um, that's the problem as well if you're not on, if you're not having the information prior then you cannot really be stealth yes any uh, any test actually have its own weight inside the uh, big pie of uh, OS fingerprinting tests each parameter has its own weight as well so if one of them is not being matched or there is a problem matching that parameter with the uh, signature database that will take the uh, percentage of uh, uh, hit to be less than uh, 100 percent one other thing that I want to mention this is a project that uh, my uh, fellow um, co authors are doing. It's called STIF. It stands for um, Security Tools Integration Framework, which basically is a pl platform to automate security analysis. You can check the, uh, uh, that project with the URL that is uh, being uh, 
shown at the bottom. It's a very cool project, very cool guys. You should uh, check their project as well. Other questions? Thank you for having me today and uh, enjoy the conference.